Good afternoon from North Carolina. I pray that you're having a fabulous Sunday afternoon or evening wherever you're located. It's pretty much going on evening here, but it's uh, been a beautiful day. It's been sunshiny, a little warm, probably 85 degrees, but it's really nice and uh, lovely. We had some rain and we enjoyed that and seeing things turn green. And of course, the trees are starting to bud and we're seeing lots of green. So the, the, of course, the uh, rain does that, doesn't it? So praise the Lord. And I trust, I know I've been gone for a couple of weeks and, uh, but, or several weeks, but I just want to, uh, hope that y'all had a great, uh, Mother's Day holiday and enjoyed some time off and maybe you rested and recuperated from things. Uh, if you're watching online, just let me know where you're watching from on the comments below. Oh, the Sanchez family are on the road traveling home to North Dakota from Wyoming. Well, safe travels. We pray for you to pass from your location to your home in safety, and the blood of Jesus covers you and keeps you safe. Thank you for tuning in. It was so nice that you took that time to do so. I'm glad you're you're on the road home so we just trust for good travels and uh have a good trip amen praise the lord amen uh you know praise reports are so important um i know if you have a praise report type it in the comments below i love to hear what god is doing in uh, others lives and how he's just moving and doing some fabulous wonderful things um, I had the opportunity to see God work this week, or uh, this past week, um, with um, one of my sons who was traveling. And, you know, God, you know, when you're in the middle of a situation and you've got a trial and you've got some circumstance that you're facing in the middle and you're praying and you're believing God, to you, it's so big and it's so important, even though it's so maybe be minor or small to somebody else. Well, my son was uh, at work and of course he travels all the way around t to do his work all over the, the uh, state of Florida. And he was in an area in Florida and he uh, couldn't find his wallet. And he began to search and think and, you know, pray. And he called, he texted me and said, Mom, you need to pray and agree with me. I'll find my wallet. So um, we did. We prayed and, and believed God. And I just kept telling him, you know, the Spirit of God's going to show you where that is. Don't worry. But after work, he got to looking and going different places, the baby places that he had been before. He never found it. And he got home and he said the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to him and tell him to go look in a specific place. And he kept saying, oh, I wouldn't have put it there. I just I just wouldn't have done that. You know, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, it's a good thing to listen, isn't it? So uh, he began to then finally say, okay, okay, I'll go look there. So he went and looked and behold, there was his wallet. So praise God. See, God will answer your prayers and he'll show you where things were and he'll show you where you left them. And you know, I've even had miracles happen once uh, when Pastor Mike and I lived in Oklahoma. Uh, he was working construction at that time and he had stopped on his way to do his job and he'd stopped at a 7-Eleven to get some coffee. And when he got out of his truck, uh, and he got back into his truck and then he got home that night and he looked in his pocket and he had a ring that his dad had given him. It was kind of like an heirloom and he had this ring that his dad had given him and he wasn't there and he began to pray and think, okay, where would it be? And the spirit of God told him it was in that 7-Eleven's parking lot. And so he got in his truck and here it's like 6, 630 at night. He gets in his truck, he drives down there, and it's there in the parking lot. He pulls right in the same spot where he had parked that morning, opened his door, and there it was on the ground. It had stayed there the entire day. 
God had protected it. I'm telling you, God does such wonderful, absolute glorious things. So, you know, just trust the Lord. If you're a tither and you're a giver and you're faithful to do those things and your things are protected, God protects and he will not let the devourer steal your things. Amen. So stay in faith and don't give up hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You know, uh, I just recently found a new church. I am so excited. I've gotten, uh, I've probably been there now about three months and I'm really excited about this church. I love it. The people are great. The pastors are super great. It's a wonderful church and I feel so, um, completed there. I feel like the Lord just put me in this place and it's just really great. You know, it's real important right now in this day and time to be serving the Lord. It's so important and you have to be all in. Get all in serving the Lord. Find you a church. If you're not going to church somewhere, it's so important to be all in and serve God. Get in church. Listen to the word. Fellowship with God's people. Be in like fellowship with like mind with everybody. That is so important. God said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It's, it is important to be that way. And it fulfills something within you. It does something that God is establishing with the church and the body of Christ, especially when you're in unity, believing and trusting and praying and praising all together and doing the same thing. It's doing a, a, a marvelous work. And, you know, because we're giving an all out effort, to the Lord in service and in praising and in the word. It's so important. We're going to be able to see direction from him so much clearer. He's going to be right on time. It's really important. And also he'll make things uh, change. There'll be some changes that take place. And that's important because how many of you know we don't go along every day and everything stays the same. It's important that they change. Amen. And, you know, changes come because of the word of God. Yes, the word of God is very important. Uh, It says in the Bible that when we became born again, we became new creatures in Christ. All those old things, the old ways that we were, the things, they're they're passed away. They're gone. They're under the blood. They're covered. And God has forgiven us. We're brand new creatures. We are living the right life. We're doing what he called us to do. We're brand new. But the only thing our job is to do is to have a renewed mind. So it's important that we renew our mind to the word of God. Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world. In other words, don't try to be like the world. Don't try to do what everybody else does. Be like Jesus conform don't come be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god amen praise the lord and you know as we do that he increases and we decrease it becomes more of him and less of us and all that we do That's what renewing our mind does. We begin to see his will. We begin to have his nature. We begin to do what he's called us to do and able to, as we fill up on the word of God, the old man, anything that's old that maybe tries to pop back up because the old sometimes tries to do that. Sometimes when we behaved a certain way, it tries to creep back in. But when the word is in there and the word, we're renewing our mind to the word and we're listening to the word and we're praising the Lord and we're doing what he called us to do, those things begin to flush away. And uh, so that's important. And you know, if you have some family members, maybe friends that you look at and you say, wow, they really need some changes in their life. Well, don't nag them into it. Speak the word of God into their lives. Speak the word. The word is what changes people. When they fill up on the word, it'll flush away all those old things. You might say, well, they don't want to hear the word. You know, I realize that there are people that don't want to hear the word. I have a family member not too long ago that said, don't tell me what that says. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to know that. 
And I looked at them, well, I said over the phone, I was talking to them, and I said, you know what? I said, I'm the only one that's probably going to speak this to you, and you're going to hear the word of God, and that's the only thing that's going to change you. So you need to hear it, and I'm not stopping no matter what you say, so you might as well get used to it. And I just, and they just kind of laughed and went on their way. But I believe the word is working in their life and things will begin to change as the word is spoken in their life and over their life. So don't stop speaking the word of God. They will begin to fill up with the word of God and it'll flush out all the old. Amen. Because the word sanctifies, it renews and it cleanses us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that was just a little prelim, some free stuff. So as we get started tonight, I'm going to pray. So let's pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for these people that are watching tonight and watching even those that are watching in the future. I pray that they are all inspired and motivated by the Holy Spirit to be all in, all into the word, all into acting on the word, all into speaking the word, all into believing the word. I pray that faith arises in each person, that their prayers are answered, their bodies are healed, their finances are increased. From their giving and I pray tonight that father that you would speak directly to our hearts give us revelation of your word I thank you father for faith we are a people of faith and we stand in faith and we believe in faith father so full that there is no room for doubt or unbelief in the name of Jesus and we said amen praise the Lord you know, someone once said to me that, and I heard this just recently, that our faith, if our faith doesn't move our mouth, then it's not going to move our mountain. It's so important that it moves our mouth. If it doesn't move our mouth, if the faith that we have doesn't move our mouth, if we can't muster up the faith to speak God's word, then it's not, we're not going to muster up enough faith to speak to the mountain for it to move. Amen. Because faith is activated by our confession. That's what faith is activated by. Faith words will put us over into a different realm rather than in the, in the natural realm. Amen. Faith always says, I already have it. It's mine. I have it. I have it. It's mine. I'm walking in it. I'm living in it. It's mine. Praise God. And we exercise our faith for the promises of God by what we say. That's why it's important. You know, I just heard today a minister say, we have today what we spoke yesterday. If you think about that for a minute, that kind of puts you on the spot, doesn't it? Because what were we talking yesterday? Were we talking doubt and unbelief or were we talking faith? And I got it and I'm claiming it and it's mine. I have it now. Or are we saying, well, I hope it comes someday. One day it might be here. I know God's working probably. That's not faith. Faith is calling those things that be not as though they were. We have to call it in. Amen. And when you need a miracle, the best thing to do is to sow a seed. Sow a seed when you need a miracle. And you can sow a seed, whether it's a financial seed or the Word of God. The Word of God is a seed. And when you sow that Word and you're believing God for something and you're sowing the Word, you're putting the Word out there, it's going to come back to you on every way. Praise the Lord. Believing is an attitude. Believing is an attitude of faith. When you believe you've got the attitude of faith, you are believing, I can do this through Christ. He can, He strengthens me. He gives me, uh, the words of my mouth. Praise the Lord. And speaking is the initial act of faith. So that's why it's important that we speak. It's the act of faith. That's what we do. And I think sometimes we need to stop trying to manage things in the natural. The supernatural says, I'm, you know, it tells us, you know what? 
You're not responsible for making the word work. You're not. You and I are not responsible for when we speak the word, for doing something to make it work out. That's God's job. Our job is believing and speaking, and that's what's important. It says, by our words, we are justified. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's important to confess. See, if you took confession, if it was confessing to be saved, it's confession to believe for the other things. But you have to believe first and then confess. You know, when you look as an example in the Bible of Abraham, when things looked hopeless, the word said he believed the promise of God and expected God to fulfill it. Therefore, his faith was made strong, being convinced that God's power would do something, that, oh, do what he said, do what God said that he would do what he said he would do. Amen. So with his mouth, he believed God because he was convinced that God's promise that he would do what he promised. But in his confession, he then began to glorify God at the, at the end. After God had told him this, he believed and then he began to speak. He glorified God for the situation. You know, when we talk about our discouragement or the discussion of the trial that we're going through all we're doing is enforcing the issue of the trial we're enforcing it we're making it bigger and grander and more powerful than god is so we have to stop doing that and start declaring god's word because that will enforce his will over the situation. Stop enforcing by your depression, your, oh, you know, your discouragement or the problem, telling everybody about it. Start saying what God said about it. You know, if God gave, if the, if the enemy or the, the doctors or somebody gives you a bad report, start saying what God's report says about your situation. God said he would supply all my need. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. So things are coming into me because I've given and he said he would rebuke the devourer for my sake. Start talking about when I give, it's given back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Men give back to me. Start talking the word. Start saying what the word says. Amen. By giving glory to God, our celebration, when we begin to celebrate and give glory to God, becomes the demonstration of our expectation of God's power. I'll say that again because it bears repeating. By giving glory to God, our celebration becomes the demonstration of our expectation of God's power. In other words, we're expecting God to work and we're demonstrating it by giving him praise and glory and honor and, oh, magnifying his name. Because Why? Because we expect it. We believe it. We know he's operating. He's doing something. We know it by we just know we know that we know. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, Acts 16 in verse 25, it talks about Paul and Silas. And it says, Paul and Silas, undaunted, prayed in the middle of the night. Here they are locked in prison. They've been beaten within an inch of their life. Now they're locked up in prison in the deepest and darkest part of the prison. They're down in the very dark part of the, of the prison. And one of the ministers that had maybe visited that that uh, a particular prison said that it was so dark you couldn't see anything. There's no windows down there. So, and it was night anyway, so there wouldn't have been any light. So all they had was candlelight, plus the fact that it was very stinky. It was very nasty. So here they are in the darkest, deepest uh, part of the prison. They've been beaten within an inch of their life. I'm sure they're hurting all over where they've been beaten. And here they are locked up in chains. They're chained up. But they begin to pray. 
pray at midnight. Well, I don't know why midnight, but they began to pray at midnight. And then they sang songs of praise to God. They sang songs. I don't know if I was in that type of situation. You know, when you think about it, would you behave that way? Would you do that? I don't know. But it says suddenly... When they begin to do that, suddenly, all of a sudden, because they were praying and they're praising God, suddenly a great earthquake shook the foundation of the prison. And all at once, every person that was chained up in that prison's chains were broken off and they were free. Think about it. If prayer and praise can do that for somebody in prison... What can it do for you in any prison situation that you feel like you're locked in? Maybe you feel like you're locked in a particular job and you want a different job or you're locked in your financial situation. You need more money. You need, maybe you're locked into or chained, excuse me, chained to some kind of lab report or doctor's report. You know, the prayer and praise can change your situation and loose you from that situation. It can cause the power of God to come into your situation and break those chains of bondage. Think about that. Isn't that glorious? Is It's worth praising God for. It's worth praying to Him for because He'll do that for you. Now, since we know when you know, because if you've read the Bible, if you've listened to any preacher preach, you know what Jesus has done for you. Think about the wonderful things he's done for us. His, his triumph is our celebration. He triumphed over the enemy. And so it's worth celebrating. It's worth giving glory to him. It's worth just praising him. And you know, in the midst, especially in the midst of any trial, when you're going through something, don't start whining and crying and carrying on. Begin to lift your hands and say, well, Father, this didn't take you by surprise. I just praise you for the answer. I praise you for stepping in and breaking the chains out of this situation. I thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Begin to sing praises. You probably have some songs on your heart. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. And do you know what that does? It tells the devil he's not winning. It tells him he's not going to win. You're winning because of the things that Jesus has done for you. Psalms 126 in verse 1 says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who were dreaming. Then they thought it, it was like, it, in other words, what he's saying, it was like we were had had a dream that this was going to happen. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. The Lord has done great things for us and we were glad. This is our triumph in the victory is that the Lord turned our situation around and we are glad. And you know, you don't have to see it to believe it. You just have to know that you know that you know that God is doing something for you. He's turning your situation around. He's moving the circumstances. He is taking off the chains. He's revealing his power in your situation. You're going to see a change in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know... I know some people might be watching here in the next, it's not you that's watching, maybe down the road a ways. There might be even people that tell you, well, I don't see a change. I don't see a change. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see anything. But we need to see by the eye of faith. We need to look past the circumstance and see that God is working no matter what. We need to see that because you see, the devil will challenge you not over your past miracles because all the things that happened to you in the past, you already know happened and they were great and you were praising God over them. He's going to challenge you over future miracles, something that you're believing God for, for today or tomorrow or the next week, 
something you're believing for right now. The devil's going to challenge you. He's going to let you know that, well, you might not get that. Well, what happens if you don't? What happens if the report is this way? Or what happens if that? You just have to tell him to be quiet and start praising the Lord. Amen. Don't let doubt come in. Don't let it steal your faith and steal your blessing. Amen. Begin to see the turnaround in the spirit. Begin to imagine it. Begin to cast down all the vain imaginations, all those imaginations that are against the word of God. Bring them into captivity. Begin to speak God's word over them. And then you'll begin to see the changes. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't let the thing, don't let the devil think he's winning because he's not. Amen. Begin to prophesy to your situation. As you pray in the Holy Ghost and then you begin to prophetically speak over your situation, you'll see those changes happen. You'll see those things happen. Speak to them. Prophetically speak. I see that money coming in in the name of Jesus. God said he would supply it. I see you angels go forth and bring in that money that's mine. Every dollar that has my name on it comes to me in the name of Jesus. That's prophetically speaking to the situation. Amen. Tell yourself you are more than a conqueror through Christ. And tell yourself you are more than an overcomer. Tell yourself that the money comes in now in the name of Jesus. Don't be thinking that it's not coming. Don't be thinking, well, the doctor's going to give you a bad report. Start talking to yourself and telling you what the word of God says. You tell yourself what to believe. Nobody else is. You're not going to hear it from your neighbors. You're not going to hear it from your family. You're going to have to tell yourself what you believe. Amen. Healing flows in your body in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God sent his word and it healed you. Amen. Believe it. Believe it. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Tell yourself when you get up in the morning, I feel good. Amen. I feel so good. I feel great. Do you know one time I was dealing with some symptoms in my body and I got up in the morning and I really wasn't feeling too good in the natural. I was fighting those symptoms, but I told myself I would, I went into the kitchen and I was fixing myself something to eat and I just began to say, I feel so good. I feel great. I feel good. I feel great. Hallelujah. And I begin to dance around. Do you know within a matter of minutes, I begin to feel good. And you can fight off the devil if you begin to tell yourself what you're going to believe and what you're going to stand on and what you're going to believe for. Speak the word of God. You'll see a change in your life. It will happen. It will happen. I'm telling you, God is good all the time. Tell yourself, I am prosperous. All my needs are met. The angels are bringing my money to me now in the name of Jesus. Tell yourself, I have more than enough for every situation and plenty left over for every good work. Amen. This is something to remember. Your voice, our voice, this is something important. So write this down if you can. Our voice is the address for the blessing and the miracles in the midst of trouble. Your voice is the address. That's where it's going to come to is your voice. It's not just going to fall out of the sky because you're sitting on your sofa moaning and groaning. It's going to come when you speak, when you say God's word, when you begin to praise him for it, when you begin to believe him for it, when you begin to act upon the word of God, initiate action by speaking what God says. Then you're going to see the very thing that God said would happen will happen. Amen. You're going to see the miracle happen in your life. First Peter for first Peter one eight says, whom having not seen you love. We didn't see Jesus. We didn't get to physically see him, touch him, be with him, talk to him. Did we? No. But he says, though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible. You rejoice, you rejoice, and full of glory receiving the end of your faith, 
This is the, the Passion Translation version. It says, you loved him passionately. You love him passionately, although you did not see him. Isn't that the truth? We love Jesus because he loved us and all that he's done for us. Amen. And then it says, but through believing in him, you are saturated with ecstatic joy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Indescribably sublime and immersed in glory. And you receive the end of your faith. Receive the end of your faith. Listen, fighting the good fight of faith isn't sitting around moaning and groaning. That's not fighting a good fight of faith. Paul didn't do that. He didn't sit around and moan and groan. Peter didn't do that. Sit around and moan and groan. Nope, nope. It's shouting and praising. That is receiving, that is fighting the good fight of faith and receiving the end of your faith is shouting and praising Lord. Because the why? Why do you want to know? Because the battle is the Lord's. Amen. And the victory belongs to us. Praise God. See, when you begin to shout, you begin to praise, you begin to speak the word, the Lord is at work. Angel, he sends that word. The angels only hearken unto the voice of the Lord and the, vo and which is the word of God. So when you begin to speak the word of God, angels are going forth and they're planning and preparing and doing the work that you have spoken and the word that you have spoken. We're going to receive the end of our faith when we begin speaking the word of God, the harvest, the outcome of our believing when we're trusting, when we're praying and when we're praising. That's so important. You know, it comes really down to this. Either we believe or we don't. You know, there's no middle of the road. There's no gray area in believing or or it's it's we either believe or we don't believe. You either believe or you don't. That's just all there is to it. We don't kind of believe. Well, I kind of think that it might be that way. That, that's not believing. Believing is believing. Amen. If we believe in the word of God, if we believe what God said in his word, his promises, and that when we speak the word, that it will transpire. If we believe, then what happens is God is doing exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think that's what's happening he is doing it amen amen that's why we start rejoicing it's because we know he's working praise god amen and we've got the end result we've got the end of our faith that money is mine in the name of Jesus. That bill is paid in the name of Jesus. That body is healed in the name of Jesus. God is doing great things. When you think about it, has God ever let you down? No, he never has. He never stopped performing his works of miracles. He's never stopped uh, honoring his word. He always performs his word. It never returns to him void. Praise the Lord. You know, if I was to deposit some money into your bank account, you don't actually in the physical see that cash or handle that cash. It just got deposited into your account. But you don't sit around and start moaning thinking, well, I sure wish I had that hundred dollars. I sure wish that money would come into me. No, you begin to thank me. You begin to thank God for that money. You begin to praise the Lord. Gosh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. That money is mine in Jesus' name. You even begin to act upon it and spend it. Praise the Lord. Well, that's how we're supposed to act when it comes to believing for healing or restoring stolen items that the enemy stole from us. Or that's how we're supposed to believe when we want joy or peace in our life. Amen. We begin to thank God in the midst of that situation. We might not see it physically or touch it tangibly, but we know that God is working and that he, things are happening in our behalf. He's changing things. Praise before Anything happens. It's just like that army, that praisers that went out before the army and they, and the enemy was confused. He turned away and left and went his, and they, in fact, the enemy turned on himself. 
So that's what you have to do. Start praising the Lord. The enemy will be confused. He won't even know what to do. They'll start fighting among themselves and they'll leave. So praise the Lord for your situation. You know, I, I come to think of it, I think we need to be like first responders. You know, when you call a first responder, they're there right on the button. They are there to take care of business. The fire trucks, the, poli the police, the the uh, first responder, uh, those uh, the people that do the ambulance, they are there on the button. They are taking care of those things immediately. So we need to do that when it comes to praise and when we come to thanking God and when we come to speaking the word, be a first responder. Re respond first with God's word instead of worry and fret and concern. Don't do that. Don't give in to those things. Just begin to lift your hands and praise God. Father, I thank you. You're taking care of this situation. Praise God. It's resolved. Just like I told you at the beginning about my son's wallet. We just begin to praise God and just begin to prophetically say he was going to find it. You know what? God worked. Hallelujah. Praise God. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill a good purpose. God is doing it. He's doing it. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. And as I close, I just want to say, you know, our praise should be the same. We should be responding to the Lord in praise because praise and laughing and rejoicing in the Lord in the very midst of a trial is an act of faith. It takes faith to do that in the middle of your situation. It takes faith. You just have, that's what you're doing. You're acting in faith when you begin to praise Him and you don't see what you're believing for and what faith pleases God. And that's important, isn't it? We need to laugh at the devil. Don't let him steal your joy. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Amen. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. And his joy is our salvation. Because the Lord, as I said in this other scripture, the Lord has turned our captivity and we rejoice in the triumph of the Lord's salvation. Hallelujah. That's worth shouting about. So that's worth what we need to do. He is working things out. And as I'll close with this scripture, Romans 8, 28. Hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. So because our hope is set on what is yet to be seen, we patiently keep on waiting for its fulfillment, don't we? That's so true. Verse 28 says, So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. God's got a plan. He's not going to live you by the wayside. He's going to fulfill that purpose in you. Just begin to praise him and thank him for all that he's doing in your life. Amen. Can you just shout one praise to the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope that this message was a uh, inspiration to you. Maybe motivation, motivating you to be more praiseworthy, motiv motivating you to be more thoughtful about uh, worshiping the Lord and all that you're going through. Amen. We all go through something every day. There's something every day, but God is good and he makes sure we're okay. Thank you for tuning in with me. And as I uh, stop this uh, message, I'm going to pray for you. We're going to believe God for you and your household. Thank you, Father. Lord God, we just praise you and thank you for your word. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for the spirit of God in our lives, for in increasing faith in us and for inspiring us to stay steady and not give up and not throw in the towel but but believe and continue to 
to say your word, to speak your word. Help us, Holy Spirit, to remember to do these things, to remember to speak the word of God. And Lord, I just pray for everyone that's listening within the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, for the spirit of God to be upon them, for them to be blessed in all their ways. Father, I know that there's this couple, the couple that's traveling. I thank you, Father, for watching over them to keep them as they travel. They'll, they, the blood of Jesus covers them. They're going to arrive at their destination in safety, Father, on time in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over your word to perform it in everyone's life. Lord, we just give you praise. We thank you. Thank you for meeting the needs of the people, whether it's spirit, soul, or body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. We just give you praise. And Lord, I just pray, pray special blessings for all the people that have sown a seed, whether it's the word of God or whether it's a financial seed, that it'll return a hundredfold harvest in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. We give you praise for it in Jesus name. Amen. I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. You're a blessing to me. Keep in touch and have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Love you. Bye.